going to talk about beta blockers. Beta blockers um, came into the, the scene about early 1990s, and we started using them in clinical practice around 1997, 1998. And this drug has changed the face of heart failure. Um, what it does is we know that patients with heart failure have an extraordinary amount of adrenaline and norepinephrine, the fight or flight hormones circulating in their body. When that happens, the heart works harder. The blood vessels tighten, the heart rate goes up. If we don't stop this cascade of symptoms, the heart will fail. So the beta blockers block the effects of the adrenaline and norepinephrine, arteries relax, the heartbeat slows down, and the heart is able to just kind of rest. And as it rests, we start seeing healing. So as the heart rests and slows down, it is able to pump more blood to the kidneys, sodium and extra fluid are passed in the urine. Over time, heart failure symptoms improve and the heart function improves. Let's talk about that. This has got to be my favorite drug. By blocking the effects of the sympathetic nervous system, the adrenaline, the norepinephrine, the heart function, or the EF, can improve. So the majority of patients who start a beta blocker and complete um, titration up to the, the maximum dose that, that we want them on, majority will have an improvement in their injection fraction by at least seven points. Some of our patients will even normalize their heart function. The drugs that we typically use now are Coreg or Carvedilol, or Toprol XL, the long-acting metoprolol. And every heart failure patient should be on this drug, period. Um, this is, again, revolutionized heart failure care. When I first started the heart failure clinic back in 1997, we would transplant, transplant about 25 to 30 people every year. And once we started using beta blockers, uh, the numbers kept dropping and dropping. And nowadays, we only transplant maybe one or two out of our clinic a year. The long-term benefits of this drug, again, is it improves symptoms, keeps heart failure from getting worse, prolongs life, it will improve the ejection fraction, and can even normalize the heart muscle. Let me say that again. It can even normalize the heart muscle. So there's hope now. Patients with heart failure who... Um, 10 years ago, had a heart failure exacerbation and were told, you know, your heart's weak, you know, you're going to need a heart transplant, are now walking around living normal lives because of this drug. The most common side effects are early on. Um, as we start this, this type of drug, the carvedilol, let's say, we, um, we will see that patients will have a tendency to retain a little more water, they might get fatigued a little bit more. And this is where our part comes in, because our job is to be their cheerleader and tell them, you know, I hate to say this, but it's no pain, no gain. So I would cheer them through this phase of therapy and tell them, as soon as we get to the, the proper doses, you're going to feel better. So what we have to do, we have to really start very low and go slow. So we increase it little by little. So um, Carvedilol, for instance. Um, the patient will initially be started on a very teeny tiny pill, and it's at 3.125 milligrams, and they'll take that twice a day. And it's better tolerated with food because it slows the absorption, and um, over time, we'll double it. So they'll come back in two to three weeks, we'll double the dose to six. They'll come back three to four weeks after that, we'll double the dose again. So early on, they might have the symptoms of being fatigued, dizzy, uh, might retain a little bit of water, and then about three or four days, those symptoms subside and they feel okay, and then we double it again, and then we double it again. So it's a very close relationship we develop with these people, but as we get into the higher doses, they start to notice, you know, hey, I do feel better. So this is lifelong therapy as well. They will stay on this drug until, again, the very end, until we're smarter in knowing who can come off the medicine and who needs to stay on. So even if the heart function gets better and improves or even normalizes, they will at least be on an ACE inhibitor or a beta blocker for the rest of their lives.